Hi everyone, Yasas Kekalos Tirtatea to another episode of Dimitro's Dishes. Today we're going to be making cherry cheesecake turnovers. We're going to make a cherry filling that's super simple to make. We're going to make a little cheesecake filling that's also very easy to do. And we're going to wrap them all up in flaky buttery puff pastry. Let's get started. So we're going to begin by making the cherry filling and you can definitely use fresh cherries. It's summertime right now here in Houston when I'm making these puff pastry turnovers. So cherries are in season, but I'm going to go with frozen cherries just because it's, they're such a time saver. Taking out the pits is really time consuming. And if I didn't have frozen cherries, I definitely would use fresh ones, but frozen works perfectly. You don't have to thaw them out. You're going to put five cups of frozen cherries in a pot. That's about 765 grams. Next, we're going to add the juice of half of a lemon, three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. Then you're going to add half a cup of water and four tablespoons of cornstarch. Mix everything up and let it start cooking over medium heat. Once the mixture starts to thicken, it's ready. Now, I went with four heaping tablespoons of cornstarch and that was a little bit too much. So the filling got really thick really fast. So the way to fix that is you just add a little bit of water to it until it gets to the consistency that's correct, where it's still thick, not runny, but it's not like goopy, if you know what I mean. Take it off of the heat and then you're gonna go ahead and add a teaspoon of pure almond extract to it. Make sure you're using pure almond extract because artificial al almond extract is not the flavor that we're going for. That just doesn't taste good at all. Take the pie filling off of the heat and let it come to room temperature. You can do this step a day or two or even three ahead of time and keep the cherry pie filling refrigerated. It's best to use it nice and cold because if you're going to use it hot, what's going to happen is once it touches the puff pastry, everything's going to start melting. A quick way to cool this is you can just fill up a big bowl with ice and then put the pot in there and uh, the cherry filling will cool in like 15 minutes. Next, we're going to move on and we're going to make the cream cheese filling or the cheesecake filling, which is so easy to make. We're going to put eight ounces of room temperature cream cheese in a bowl with a quarter cup of granulated sugar, a little splash of pure vanilla extract, about half a teaspoon or so, and one egg. Go ahead and whisk the egg on the side of the bowl and mix everything all together. Now, it is a good idea to take out a hand mixer for this. It's going to make a really smooth filling. I went ahead and I just used a fork and then I switched to a little whisk and the filling is a little bit grainy, but it's still going to taste good. So I'm just going to keep it as is because I just don't feel like taking out my, my mixer. Next, we're going to put it all together. So I have two sheets of puff pastry. I like to buy my puff pastry at the restaurant supply store because they sell these large sheets that are the equivalent of the two sheets that are already sold in the supermarkets. You know those Pepperidge Farm ones that are rolled up and you get two sheets? If you're using those, you're going to need two boxes of those or four sheets. But if you're using these beautiful large puff pastry sheets that are sold in restaurant supply stores, you're just going to need two. We're going to cut the sheets into five inch squares. So just take your squares and put them on a work surface and put one tablespoon of the cream cheese filling in the center. Then add a heaping tablespoon of the cherry pie filling on top. Go ahead and gather the ends together and seal them. You can press them down or you should press them down with the tines of a fork just to seal everything nice and tight. Resist the urge to overfill these because if you overfill them, you won't be able to seal them. Everything's going to start oozing out. I've done that before and then you're just going to have a mess on your hands. Go ahead and put the pastries on a baking tray or two baking trays that are lined with parchment paper. If your cherry filling was still kind of warm or if the puff pastry was out for too long and it's too soft, it is a good idea at this point to chill them in the freezer. It's just chill the whole trays for about 20 minutes. They're going to cook much better. They puff up much better if the puff pastry is on the cooler side than if it's at room temperature. That's a little tip that you might have not already known. And if you're not going to bake both of these, you can just put as many as you're going to bake in a tray and freeze the rest. Once they're frozen solid, you can just transfer them into freezer safe bags and they will stay fresh in there in your freezer for about a month. And you can bake them straight out of the freezer frozen. Brush the tops with some egg wash. I just combined an egg yolk with a couple tablespoons of milk, whisked it all together to make the egg wash. I'm going to brush the tops of my pastries with the egg wash and then I'm going to cut some slits on the top. So that way while the pastries are baking, the steam is going to have a place to escape. That way they don't burst out and just come out of the pastry. I'm talking about the filling. You're going to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and the trays are going to bake on the center rack for about 20 or 25 minutes or until they're nice and golden. 
take them out of the oven and let them come to room temperature. Once that's happening, you can make a little icing to glaze the tops with. If you don't want to do the icing, you can just sprinkle them or dust them with some confectioner sugar. That will be perfect as well, but the icing is so simple to make. All you need is two thirds of a cup of confectioner sugar, about two tablespoons, two to three tablespoons of milk, and just the tiniest splash of vanilla extract. Whisk that all together, and once the pastries are at room temperature, you can drizzle the glaze on top, or you can serve it on the side, and your guests can drizzle if they want some glaze on their turnover as they take it. Take a look at them. They're beautifully golden and nice and puffy. And when you look inside, the layers are nice and flaky. The cream cheese filling should taste just like cheesecake. The cherry pie filling tastes like cherry pie. It's so easy to make. You're gonna have some leftovers with the cherry pie filling and a little bit leftover of the cream cheese filling. Just transfer them to containers and refrigerate it. It'll stay fresh in your fridge for about a week. You can spoon the leftover pie filling over ice cream or yogurt or even oatmeal. Everything is so delicious. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. The exact measurements are on the website, DimitrisDishes.com. Call some friends over, make some Greek coffee to serve with this. If you want to learn how to make Greek coffee, click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, us.